Hey kids, it's Mr. Fla here, hope you're well. Out and about today on another bike review on a rather dull and slippery Buckinghamshire day, but I'm very excited because I'm on the uh, long awaited and much anticipated Triumph Trident. The new bike for 2021, which was announced about back in August in 2020, I think. And this is the first chance I've had to ride it. So if you're interested in this uh, machine, stick around, stay tuned. I'll give you my first impressions review. Okay, so I've been dead keen to uh, ride this bike ever since it was announced last August. Uh, Trump very kindly invited me to the uh, press launch of this bike in Tenerife that I think was in October. I actually declined because I said uh, I didn't think that was a fair test of the bike. These bikes are going to be ridden on slippery, damp winter's days like this one. And I'd rather uh, test the bike at home in those sorts of conditions. And uh, they've been very kind and true to the word. And in fact, I'm the first, apparently, UK YouTuber to borrow the bike long term from Triumph UK. So thank you to those guys for letting me borrow the bike for this real world test. All right, so this is literally my first rod. I've just jumped on the bike. I'm recording this in February, it's a cold, damp day, so it properly is a real-world test. So what do I think of it? Well, let's get the old visor down, because it's a little bit chilly out. And this is one of my favourite little blatting roads. My initial impressions are, it's a very strong bike in terms of its pull. I mean, given it's a 660cc or thereabouts, it actually goes like the wind. They've given this a, a tune such that the torque is available low down in the rev range, and you can really feel that. It's much quicker than I anticipated. I've been riding for the last couple of weeks one of this bike's main competitors, the Honda CB650R, which more on the channel in due course. So stick around, stay tuned if you're interested in that bike. But I can tell you straight off, this bike feels much faster than that. Not the speed is everything, of course. All right, let's get into the practical stuff before I get too excited. Well, actually, it's the chance to wind her up a bit. Let's just see what she sounds like, this triple. Well, the traction control is doing its thing. It does hit the rev limiter quite quickly. But yeah, she absolutely flies. And she sounds lovely as well. Yeah, it was running out of puff quite quickly there as I went through the gears, but, you know, I was going at uh, slightly illegal speed, so not going to be an issue in the real world. It's definitely not as fast or as strong up top as the Street Triple, which is a bike I'm very used to. Oh, hello, road closed. That's a bit of a nuisance. Let's go down this way then. All right, so enough about the uh, the sound. Let's talk about some practical aspects. So what's the seat position like? Well, it feels very familiar, actually. Uh, handlebars maybe, maybe slightly wider than those on the Street Triple. Uh, my legs are tucked up in a relatively sporty position, not, not quite as sporty as the Street Triple. Looking down here, they are at an acute angle, but it feels comfortable to me, it's not terribly acute. I'm sitting uh, quite upright though. On the Street Triple you would be led forward a bit more than this, you're a bit more upright here. Being a bit careful, there's gravel and stuff on these roads. But yeah, I'd describe it as a comfortable seating position. The seat itself, uh, Maybe a little bit on the hard side, but not terribly so. We're not talking KTM hard, and uh, you can move around on it a bit as well. So, you know, I'm not a particularly big bloke. I'm five foot eight, uh, and there's plenty of room on here for me. So yeah, I think it scores pretty well on the comfort stakes. Just the seat is potentially a little bit hard. This is a really bumpy road. I hope that the uh, you're getting some reasonable images off of these cameras. They've got amazing stabilisation on these these days, but even these get defeated sometimes. This is a shocking road in terms of bumps, so it's a good test of the suspension. Which on here is non-adjustable shower um, suspension. It's doing a pretty good job. The handling feels nice. It doesn't feel too hard to me. It's in my infamous Goldilocks zone. It's not too hard, not too soft. Gives the bike nice handling characteristics. Now this bike is brand new, it's only done something like 300 miles. It's just been run in before Triumph gave it to me. So I want to be a little bit careful. I'm just going to try the brakes. Front brake. Oh yeah, that works really well. It's got uh, twin discs up front. I'll go through the specs in a minute when I do the walk around in the usual way. And it's got uh, Nissin, two Nissin dual pot calipers. They seem to do a good job. You just try the rear. 
Oh, the rear's very strong. I just felt the ABS kick in a little bit there as I braked. But it is pretty slippery, as you can see, and I'm on a bit of loose stuff around here. Triple engine has got that characteristic triple whistle. It's not quite as pronounced as that on the street triple. It's sort of, uh, I don't know, it's got a different tone to the engine. It's definitely a triple. There's no mistake in that. But it's not quite so whistly whiny as that on the street triple, is how I describe it. It's just a different tone, maybe a little bit, maybe a bit, a little bit lower in note. But a great engine. I've always said it, but triples offer really the best of both worlds. You know, you've got the uh, the sound and the go of the four cylinder, but you've got the low down grunt of the uh, twin, or pretty much anyway. And certainly with the tune they've given this bike, this has got loads of low, low down grunt. For a real world motorcycle in the urban environment, or indeed riding around normal roads like this, back roads, it's absolutely perfect, the tune. Just runs out of puff quite quickly, that's all I'd say. So it's not gonna be a track day weapon. Get yourself a street triple for that, if that's your thing. But yeah, it's, I'd even describe it as quite an exciting ride, actually. Man, it is cold out here. I'm recording this on Friday to uh, publish on Monday. And uh, I was hoping the weather was going to be better than this, actually. There's a little bit of drizzle in the air, and it's around about 6 degrees centigrade. So not the warmest of days, but uh, again, as I say, a real world test. This is the sort of conditions this bike is going to be ridden in. Mirrors on here seem to work well. I've not noticed any vibrations out of the mirrors. Good view behind. I'm not looking at my shoulders. I am actually looking behind. And they're also quite a nice big surface area. The uh, stalks are on, aren't too stalky. So yeah, I think I'll probably leave those as is. What else are we looking at as we're coming up to sort of some slower riding? Well, the switch gear and the display on here, what can I say about that? Well, well done Triumph is all I can say. They've improved everything here on some of their other more recent bikes. So I'm so chuffed to see that they've done away with that horrible joystick and you've got buttons here to control the functions on the TFT. Just makes things so much easier. They're easy to uh, grab with the glove look. It's easy to go through the various settings. Proper fuel gauge on this TFT as well. So anyway, before I get to that, yeah, so the switch gear, it's quite a simple bike. Uh, it's got a mode switch here, two riding modes, rain and road. I'm in road mode at the moment. Perhaps I should stick her in rain actually, because it is a bit slippery. There we go, we're in rain now. The buttons are nice and firm. They're not what I call the PCB type. You can, you know, you feel when you've clicked them. It being a simple bike, they don't have to have those uh, clever electronical type buttons on it. If electronical is a word, if it's not, just made it up. So yeah, one of the things I like about this bike actually is the fact that the uh, electronics on it are all you need and no more. So you've got two riding modes, you've got ABS and you've got traction control, and that's it. That's all you need from electronics, nothing else to distract you. While well, I'm talking electronics, let's look at this TFT on here then. Well, I often criticise Triumph on their TFTs. The uh, TFT on the Rocket 3 and the Big Scramblers in particular I hate, they look like something from Fisher Price. But this is a jewel of a TFT. Given this bike, is aimed as an entry level into the Triumph range. It doesn't feel like a cheap bike at all. And this TFT demonstrates that because it's like a jewel to look at. It's really clear. I love the way it's actually round like a dial. And the presentation on it is nice as well. It's very, very clear to see. It's got everything you need, including a proper fuel gauge. I like that a lot. Right, let's, uh, which way should we go? Oh, let's go straight on for a bit. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to end up here. I hope you can see okay. It's a little bit of a drizzly damp day, as I say. I'm getting a bit of a uh, few rain spots on the old visor. Actually, there was a little gate back there. I think I might uh, turn the bike around, go back there. Might be an ideal place for a walk around to talk you through the spec. So let me do that. Let's turn around here and I'm not very... I might actually even turn around here in this gate. Oh, I don't want to get it all muddy. Oh well. Turning circle's not great, has to be said. That reminds me a bit of the street triple that also doesn't have a very good turning circle. 
it's all right, but it's not brilliant. Right, let me park the bike up, then I'll show you around it. Right, let's see what she's like finding neutral. Not too bad. Stand. Ah, where's the stand? Okay, it's behind the foot peg. Not quite where I was expecting it, but you get used to that. Uh, and in terms of getting my feet down, I'm five foot eight with a 32 inch leg and uh, my feet are flat on the deck. It's got a relatively low seat on this. A little bit tall for Mrs. Fly, she just tries sitting on it. She's five foot four she, and she's really on her tiptoes. It would be too tall for her at five foot four. But me at five foot eight, flat feet, no worries. All right then, let's uh, turn her off. Make sure she's not gonna go anywhere. All right, let's uh, get the other camera out and I'll show you around the bike. Okay, let's get a crack in then. Try not to get killed while I'm at it, as there's a car just coming. Right, so let's move in. All right, the spec then on this bike, you probably, uh, if you're interested in this bike, you probably know the spec off by heart, but for completeness, let me just go through the numbers on this cute little bike. Uh, first off, engine 660cc, uh, Triumph uh, Triple, three-cylinder, of course. Uh, looks very similar to the engine in my Street Triple, but in fact, this is uh, basically a new engine. 12-valve, double overhead cams. Puts out 80 brake horsepower at 10,250 RPM and 47 foot-pounds of torque at 6,250. And that's the clever bit. They've uh, managed the torque curves beautifully on this so that all the power is available basically from the off, it seems. Really, really nice. Uh, looks on the bike, well that's very much a subjective thing isn't it? When I first saw the picture of this I thought it looked really really nice. Then having seen it in the flesh I'm not quite so sure now but it is starting to grow on me again now I've actually ridden it. Uh, there's something about uh, the back end I'm not too sure of. I quite like the stubbiness of it, uh, if, by which I mean you know the way the seat comes up and that light on the back there. But this uh, bit at the back here, uh, sort of GS-ish, I'm not too sure about that at all. Um, but there we go, that's just a personal thing. Uh, the tank itself I like that. I've seen some people criticise this sort of plastic indent. I think that looks really nice. Uh, this particular paint scheme, not my favourite. I prefer the ones with the big uh, Triumph logo on them. I think they do a matte black version of this, which I think is probably the best looking. But uh, this isn't too bad. Anyway, back to the spec. Uh, brakes, talked about the front brakes, these Nissan two-pot two -pot calipers. There they are, dual discs as well. They work really well. Uh, 310 mil discs on the front. At the back, we've got a Nissan single-pot caliper, uh, and that's on a 255 mil disc. Uh, that works really well as well. Suspension on here, it's got those um, big piston forks from Showa, upside-down ones, and these are the ones that have got these separate functions, so I think they're called... SPF, oh, I don't know, it probably says on it what uh, what they call them, because they make a big song and a dance. No, can't see it on there. But anyway, these are the ones that have um, separate functions in each fork, so one does rebound, one does compression, or however it works. But they're quite clever, they're pretty uh, pretty fancy um, forks on here. 41 mil upside down forks, and they're called uh, separate function forks, that's the ones. On the back, it's got a uh, just a single monoshock, again, from a shower. There we go, adjustable for preload in the usual way. Seat height on here is quite low, 805 mil, already talked talked about that uh, and the weight of this 189 kilograms wet uh, by my calculations that would be take off about 10 kilograms for fuel so 179 kilograms dry it does feel like a light bike when you're riding it fuel capacity on here 14 liters uh, so reasonable about normal for this sort of bike um, electronics we've talked about a bit what we haven't mentioned are the lights they're LED all round and they look fantastic on here that headlight looks great doesn't it and uh, LED lights as well at the front and at the rear tucked into this uh, rear unit which look really good and on that horrible monstrosity at the back there uh, what else can I tell you price that's the good thing 7195 that compares very well indeed with its competitors this is comp um, you know up there with things like the Honda CB650R that I've already mentioned, the Yamaha MT-07, Kawasaki Z650. Uh, I think this is cheaper than all those and uh, also better equipped. The only one that I think is cheaper, which you could argue is a competitor, is the Suzuki SV650. But uh, that is uh, a much more basic bike in comparison. This thing is quite high tech in comparison to, uh, well, all its competitors really. Uh, you can get an A2 license kit for it. It's got a slip and assist clutch. You can get an accessory uh, quick shifter, which I think I definitely have. Uh, and that's about it. Oh, and the indicators are self cancelling. Let's just show you uh, a bit of a close up on that switch gear I talked about. So there's the uh, four buttons instead of the joystick, which works really well. Um, and nothing complicated about that. The mode switch is the one down the bottom there. What I don't like is the uh, main headlight switch. It's one of those ones where you press it once and instead of flashing the headlights, it puts the headlight on full. So you've got no way of actually flashing the headlight, but that's a small point. Anyway, there we go. That's the, uh, that's the spec of the bike. I'm going to enjoy riding us some more. It's, uh, yeah, it's cold out here, 
but it's a pleasure to ride this little thing. Yeah, if you can enjoy a bike on a day like this, where it's basically cold and damp, then uh, it bodes well for the summertime, doesn't it? Right then, just stick these gloves on. By the way, if you're interested in the kit that uh, you see me wearing this time, stick around, stay tuned to the very end of the video, because I will be giving you one of my infamous fashion segments where I talk you through all the bits and pieces I'm wearing, save me answering all those questions about what was that top you were wearing, all that stuff. So stay till the very end for that if you're interested. Right, let's get this show back on the road. As ever, with all traps, you have to pull in the clutch. There we go, and off we go. And this, this TFT really does look lovely, doesn't it? I, I do like that a lot. <laughs> Having slagged off trap for a lot about the TFTs, it's about time I said something nice about them. It'd be great if they swapped that out and put this on the Bobber, they put it on the uh, Rocket 3, and those others that have got the lesser TFTs. So although this is the entry-level Triumph, it's hard to see. Oh, look, there's a hovering red kite there. Can you see that? that on the GoPro probably won't come out, but uh, red kites are something that are very, very common in this area. In fact, we see more of them than we do sparrows. Anyway, where was I? Yes, yeah, so it is the entry level into the Triumph range, but it's really hard to see where they've skipped and scraped on it because uh, actually, you know, Nissan brakes are pretty good. They certainly work well. The uh, shower suspension is absolutely fine. Okay, it's not adjustable, but it feels great. It doesn't need to be adjusted for my uh, weight. The fit and finish on this is just as good as any other Triumph, and Triumph these days just does really good fit and finish. One of the options, as I mentioned, that you can get with this is a quick shifter. I think that's up and down. I would definitely do that, because this is one of those bikes that, on occasions, you're going to like to thrash to listen to that uh, three-cylinder engine, and a quick shifter would be great fun. Yeah, so in fifth, it doesn't pull away quite so sharply as you'd expect. Let's just drop it down a couple of cogs. Right, back into second. Well, <laughs> felt the front wheel go light there. Almost did a chopsy. Goodness me. Right, let's, let's go up this way. Uh, nasty, this bit of road. Woo! <laughs> Great fun. Yeah, well, what a fun bike this is. So I guess one of the questions is, you know, would you have this over a, a street triple? Well, it's, the bo both bikes in some ways share many characteristics, in some ways are quite different. This definitely doesn't have the out and out terminal speed that the street triple has. But it's got loads of grunt low down. Arguably more actually. Oops, didn't do that corner very well. And it feels as light and flickable as a street triple to me. The looks might be a deciding factor for you. For me, the street triple definitely looks better. I mean, this is not an unattractive bike by any means, but uh, I do think the CBR650, sorry, the CB650R looks better than this. But that's a purely subjective thing, of course. So as I mentioned, I've got this bike I'm really pleased to say for the next uh, 10 days, which will give me a chance to ride the pants off it and really get to know it. So I will be bringing you a lot more videos on the channel, including at the very end of my period with it, I'll be bringing you my in-depth review where I'll show you what it's like to ride the bike at night, what it's like in rain, assuming we get some proper rain, although I'm sure we will in the next 10 days. What it's like on motorways, through town, all that sort of thing. And then all the lessons I've learned, not just the good stuff, but the bad things as well. There'll be one or two little niggles that I find about it. I'm determined to find something about this bike that I don't like other than the looks, which is a subjective thing. Hello, track the lights around here, what's going on? So if you've not done so already and you're interested in the bike, do subscribe to the channel because there's lots more coming on the Triumph Trident, as I say. Oh, it's mud on the roads this time, it's horrendous. But for now, that's it for my first ride review. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, if you're interested in the kit I'm wearing, stick around and stay tuned to the very end of the video and I'll uh, talk you through my fashion segment. Who knew TMF was going to become a fashion icon? There you go, these things happen. Keep that down because it's getting chilly. All right, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.
Well, thanks for sticking around to the very end of the video and from our now infamous fashion segment. Let's uh, work through the ensemble that you've seen me wearing today. So starting with this, the helmet. This is my HJC Rafa 11. I love these uh, Rafa 11s. This is my uh, newest one of these. I've got two of these helmets. Uh, this one is called Nacri Carbon. And uh, if you want one of these, I'll stick a link below. Uh, these will cost you $431.94 in this particular colour. The reason why I like the carbon one is very, very light, although all Rafa 11s are light and comfy. I'm a big fan of them as I say I'll put a link below and full disclosure all the links that are below for all the kit that I'm wearing they're with sports bike shop uh, those are what are called affiliate links so if you click on those and you buy something I get a little bit of a kickback at no extra cost to you so full disclosure I've got no other link with sports bike shop other than that but I would say their service is absolutely excellent and I don't think you'll beat their prices either they don't pay me to say anything in fact I have no contact with sports bike shop but I do think they're a good supplier but there we go so that's the helmet anyway let's uh, take this off because the next thing that I don't mention often enough but I'm always wearing whenever you see me on these videos is these these here my custom fit ear guards these are brilliant things and uh, again I'll put a link below but if you use the code uh, TMF10 I think it is sorry if you use the code flyer10 uh, on the website as I say link below then you'll get 10% off these and these are 99 pounds these are called their CF autos and what they're doing this year which is amazing this is a, as a result of lockdown and COVID is they're now doing something called a home service so at no extra cost to you they'll actually come to your home to take the impressions so uh, 99 quid normally they take the impressions at your home if you use the code flyer10 and you'll get 10% off of that. What's not to like? They're very, very comfortable, brilliant for touring. I'm a big fan of custom fit guards. All right, let's talk you through the rest of it. All right, next up then. Oh, it's getting a bit windy out here now. I hope you can hear me okay. This, the uh, net tube. This is from my website, www.themissendomfly.com. Uh, this is just eight pounds. It doubles up as a handy COVID mask as well, if you're out and about. And, uh, well, probably not, but that's what I use it for occasionally. And uh, is, uh, is a great thing. And there's loads of new merch on my website, by the way, including new, uh, I've got some new waistcoat things, you know, gilets, I've got some new t-shirts, all sorts of stuff, baseball caps, all that kind of stuff as well on there. Oh, talking of which, bing, as if by magic, this is on there as well. This is my new beanie, ideal for these cold winter's day 16 quid as well on my website www.themissendomfly.com it's not just a sales pitch if you go to the website as well there's all sorts of background information on the channel there uh, faqs all that sort of thing go and check it out if you haven't done already all right back to the kit next up this top always gets um, comments and questions whenever i wear it this is my um a blower winter pull it's a, an excellent bit of kit it's like wearing a bit of a sleeping bag and uh, although it's not particularly protective in a abrasion resistance um respect it has got shoulder pads and it's got arm pads so it does provide you a degree of protection it's more for sort of the urban environment but on a cold winter's day i love wearing it if you want one of these it will cost you 259 once again links below okay working down then uh, the trousers these are, again brilliant on a on a cold day like today because these are gore-tex pro and they're from dane these are called i'll have to look these up these are called their lingby gore-tex gore trousers they are quite expensive as you'd expect by by gore-tex pro standards they're 529 pounds 99 but i find them comfortable uh, very warm and they are totally totally waterproof as well i'm a massive fan of dane uh, gore-tex kit you would have seen me wearing it before and then last but not least my boots these are from oxford they're called oxford digby boots they're great again they're sort of street urban boots um they've got some protection around the ankles uh, and they do have some sea protection to them as well i think they're again the uh, possibly the lowest grade let's just check that don't know not quite sure what the protection is actually i'll, I'll check it out maybe i'll put something on the screen uh, they'll cost you 97 pounds at 49 uh, if you buy those as well uh, okay what have i missed Oh, gloves. Uh, how could I miss them? Here we are. These are from Dane as well. And again, they're Gore-Tex. These are called their Dane um, Skagen gloves. They're brilliant in the winter. What I like about these is they've got, oh, I'll drop me list. Let me get that back. Come back, list. Come back, come back. Let me just put that there. Yeah, the thing I like about these is they've got these like um, velvety bit here, which means you can clean your visor or indeed your camera with them, which is handy if you're a YouTuber. And the fingertips on them, uh, you can use touch screens with uh, phones and things like that. Uh, also, they're very flexible. You don't have to break them in. They've got all the right protection in terms of knuckle and all the scaphoid and all that sort of thing. Very good gloves for the winter. I like them. Cost wise, let me just check. 139.99 so yes yeah, quite expensive but again quality kit you kind of get what you pay for all right that's it for the fashion segment hope that was of interest look forward to speaking to you again soon oh i've already done that haven't i all right cheerio for now